All right, so this is my partner, Jake Leonard, and myself, I'm Jared Hahn, and we did our final presentation on Easter Island. So Easter Island is located in the southeastern Pacific Ocean, and it is made of three extinct volcanoes. And here, where the little star is Easter Island, and this is Chile, it's kind of in the middle of the ocean. But the only way to get there today is if you take a plane to Chile, and you take a five-hour plane ride from Chile to Easter Island. So this here is a map of Easter Island. As you can see, it looks large, but it's actually a very small island in the middle of the ocean. Um, these red dots and like these red figures are the most common heads that people like to visit today. And as you can see, they're located uh, primarily on the coast of the island. So the area is 64 square miles and the population is 5,000 761 people as of today. And this right here is a picture of the island in recent times. Um, as you can see, it's not that large, but it is long, so it has a lot of coastline. And this right here is a quarry and once was a volcano where the people of the island got materials that they needed to build the heads and they dispersed them all along these coastlines and around, and some in the middle of the island. So people on the island had uh, Polynesian ancestors. So they colonized Central Society um, Islands in 1025 and 1120, and then these people um, spread to New Zealand, Hawaii, and then Rapa Nui, or East Island as it's known today. So the discovery of the island was discovered by Jacob Rogovin. He was a Dutch explorer, and he discovered it on April 5th, 1722, obviously on Easter. That's how they got Easter Island. So these are depictions or drawings of the um, Rapa Nui people in 1777 when it was discovered by the Dutch explorer. So this is a this is what the females looked like usually, and this is what uh, males primarily looked like. So the Rapa Nui people of Easter Island, they were the Polynesian origin. Um, the languages that they spoke was Pascoon and Spanish, and the religion was Birdman. So just to get in a Birdman religion, I guess. So the Birdman religion um, is what they practiced back then, what they believed in. And this is how they kind of um, crowned their leader and got the gods that they needed. So to start um, the arrival of the seabirds, so there was a smaller island off the coast of Easter Island. And once the birds got to the smaller island, the event would start, I guess. So a bunch of young warriors uh, would swim to the island, which was a very dangerous task uh, for many reasons. The first one being they had to scale down Easter Island. It was a very steep cliff um, to get to the smaller island. So once they got down that, which was very dangerous, they had to swim across the ocean, not across the ocean, but across a good length of water, which usually um, had a lot of sharks and other things that could hurt the people that were swimming. And it was also not the smoothest water, it was usually rough. And then they would race, once they got to the island, they would race to find the first laid egg on the island by the seabirds. Um, and once they got the egg, they would attach it to their head with um, a headband so they could use both their arms swimming so they wouldn't have to carry this fragile egg. They would swim back to the Easter Island and then they would present the egg to the previous god or to somebody in power at the time. And then once the person who had the first laid egg presented it to the previous god or the leader of the island, then um, the warrior's like uh, chief um, that got it would become the ruler and a living god for the next 12 months. Don't worry, there's and, more. Yeah, don't worry, we'll get back into the Birdman religion once we t start talking about the heads. So these are the heads kind of a blurry picture, but you kind of get the idea of how significantly tall they were and how much they weighed. Yeah, um, these were uh, positioned like this, but most of them that we discovered um, recently and, or in the last like 50 to 100 years, um, we can only see their heads and we just thought they were only heads. But uh, in 20, 2012, yeah, in 2012 um, they actually discovered that below uh, the surface there was actually full bodies um, to these heads, which was a huge discovery because we never knew that. So the location of the heads, there's 887 heads. Um, most of them are facing inwards. There's like a few that are facing outwards. 
but they actually moved them all along the island and down the coastlines. Coastlines. So the size of the heads, they were obviously huge, and they ranged in size from basically 5 feet to 35 feet tall, anywhere between 12 tons to 72 tons, and there is variations, there are lighter ones, and there would have been a heavier one, but it never um, was complete by the people for and, no reasons. Yep, and then there was actually three different cultural phases, and between the phase one and phase two, they actually deconstructed the heads, tore them down, and made them bigger and taller. And then by the third phase, that's when they were getting up to the 33 feet, and then they were making them a little bit more narrower and slender-like. Yeah, and this is what we thought the heads consisted of. I mean, this one kind of gave us a body and an idea that there was something else. But this was a picture sometime in the year of 2012 when we actually discovered that there was huge bodies that went along with these um, giant heads. So the making of the moai or the heads, um, they were carved sometime between the 13th and 15th century. It's unclear when exactly they were carved, but sometime within that time period. Uh, to carve the stone heads, uh, they used basalt stone picks. This was very common for their time and with the resources they had on their island. Um, they are made from solidified volcanic ash, or also known as tuff, and they got all this volcanic ash and tuff from quarries from volcanoes that um, earlier erupted and then formed this rock. And the volcano that they got most of their materials from was from the Rano Raku volcano. Not the best pronunciation, but and kind of this is a picture of the the tool that they used. And back in when they were kind of like discovering the island, they found like roughly 400. They thought it was almost like spears that they used during a war, but it ended up being tools that they used for giving themselves tattoos or even just possibly making different tools like these itself. Yeah, I mean, this <clears throat> is it, This could not be the exact tool, but this is what um, kind of archaeologists thought that they used, and it was common for that time period. So the moving of the heads, you're kind of wondering, like, how are they moving these 35-foot tall heads and just weighing tons? Well, what they did was chop down trees, and it led to deforestation, and they pretty much just rolled them from the quarry onto where they would want them to be. So we have a short video here. This, I don't, they're not, or archaeologists aren't sure if this technique was ever used because of the chopping down of all the trees, but I'll play a few seconds. If they would have used this technique of moving the heads, making it, in a sense, walk, um, it could have saved all the trees and their people in, a, in the long run. So, as you can see, the people, as you can see, the people tied a giant rope to the head, and they're making it rock back and forth. I mean, this wouldn't have been the easiest thing to do in some of the terrain, but then again, it also could save trees, and they could make it work with this. So the representation of the Moai, um, the heads themselves, um, the heads represent past chiefs and rulers, and with there being 887 heads on the island, it should give you a brief understanding of how long they've been making these heads and how many gods there were, because they did this every 12 months. Um, and the heads themselves weren't an exact representation of the past ruler or god. Um, they're just standardized just to make it easier for the people. Um, and the people saw these as ceremonial uh, conduits for communication with the gods. Um, they thought that by having a statue of the past god there and looking at them, that there, it was like able for the god to look over them and talk to. Um, these faced inwards uh, towards the communities and not outwards towards the sea so that the gods would be looking over the communities. And as it says there, it's like gods looking over the people so the differences in the Moai is they had the red caps. Yeah. So the Moai with the red crowns was rep they represented prestigious gods and rulers. There was a few of them that had it, but it was just significantly harder to actually put these on top of the heads. And the stone that they used, the material, was significantly harder to like make itself. And it was carved from a 
put a POW and the eyes on these on these uh, statues as well, they had inlaid with stone pupils, preferably it was like a red or a, a pearl blue yeah. color. Yep. So this was kind of the start of the end for the people. Um, there was a lot of conflicts going on on the island just because it was such a small island. There was different groups on the island, I guess. Um, the shrinking of the population was during a, like a long-lasting war. Uh, like I said, there was conflicts, but the main war or the main problem on the island was they were fighting for food because they chopped down all their trees, which kind of led to like deforestation and they couldn't have any food. Um, they had a lot of environment, environmental issues, the deforestation, and then this caused the starvation again. And then there's also sickness. Thank you. Stop it. Which one is it? 